The Japanese spring egg is one of the easiest, fastest ways to poach an egg. I personally tested two different methods, so let's take a look. One last ticket before it's gone. One last summer before it's fall. Okay, so before we get into the two different methods, take a look at this picture. There are three different parts to an egg. There's the thin white, there's the egg white, and there's the yolk itself. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because each of the three parts of the egg cook at different temperatures. And that explains why different methods produce different results. So it'll help you to understand the results that we get if you keep this in mind. We need to test for freshness because that also matters. That's gonna tell us how good the results that we're gonna get, right? So take a look at this picture. We are going to use the water float test for freshness. Take a pot of water. We're going to put our eggs in the water and see how far they float to the top. As you can see in the eggs that I'm using, you can see that they're not floating at all. They're lying on their side and that means they're very, very fresh. The degree to which they go upright and start floating to the surface means that they get older and older and older as you can see in this picture. So what you wanna do is use the eggs that are as freshest as possible because you will get the best results. Method number one, take a pot of water, bring it to a boil. Turn off the flame and remove the pot from the heat source onto the counter. That's really important. Next, all you have to do is gently drop the eggs into the hot water and allow them to cook from the residual heat. Now the question is, for how long? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to allow the eggs to cook for different durations of 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 14 minutes, and 17 minutes. Take them out and I'm gonna show you the results so you can see for yourself. Okay, so here is the 10 minute egg. Let's crack it open, let's take a look. And what do we see? Remember I was saying about the three parts of the egg, the thin white, the thick white, and the yolk itself. And you can see the thin white is still very thin. The thick white has started to congeal, but not a whole lot. And the yolk is very, very liquidy. No, that's not a problem. This is already a good example of a Japanese spring egg. And it's fine. It's, in fact, I, I, I've tried it this way. It tastes delicious. But I understand that some people might want something a little bit more cooked, a little bit more firmer. So let's take a look at the 12 minute egg. Okay, so this is the 12 minute egg. And as you can see, you know, after I've cracked it open and we look, there's really not a whole lot of difference, right? The thin white is still very watery. The thick white has started to congeal a little bit more. The egg is still pretty liquidy. I mean, it's a good example of a Japanese spring egg, but between the 10 minute egg and the 12 minute egg, we don't see a whole lot of difference. This is the 14 minute egg, and it might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, but what I observe is that the thin white remains pretty watery, but the thick white has started to really congeal quite a bit. And the egg yolk itself is a little bit firmer. It's no longer completely completely liquidy and it's got a firm structure. So this is probably closer to what a lot of people would want. So that's the 14 minute egg. The 17 minute egg. By now, you've noticed a common theme here, which is that the difference between one egg and one time interval versus the next is not a whole lot, right? And what I see here is that the solid egg white is more cooked, it's firmer, it has more structure, and the egg yolk has taken on this custard-like consistency. However, the thin egg white remains quite liquidy. Okay, so we've taken a look at the four different eggs cooked at different time durations. And yes, there were some differences in the degree of doneness, but maybe not as much as we had expected. And to explain that, take a look at this chart. Don't worry, we're not gonna get into all the technical physics of this thing. But the thing to remember is that there is a steep drop off in the amount of heat that's transferred over time. And what that means for us is that at the tail end, there's not a whole lot of heat that's being transferred to the food. That's why we didn't see a whole lot of difference between the 14 minutes and the 17 minute egg. There's quite a margin of error for us. That means this recipe is very forgiving and easy to use. Method number two. This method has been popularized by Kenji Lopez Alt. And if you are a regular follower of the channel, you're gonna hear his name a lot because he's done great work in terms of food science. This method does require a thermometer, but I believe it produces a more consistent, better result. So here's what you do. Take a pot of water, bring it to, a, to high heat, and then turn the heat setting to its lowest possible level. We're going to apply low heat and maintain the temperature of the water at 167 degrees Fahrenheit and keep that for 13 minutes. If the temperature varied a few degrees above 167 or a few degrees below, it's fine. The results will still work out. Now you might think that adjusting temperature and washing the eggs for 13 minutes is kind of a hassle. Nah, it was pretty easy actually. In fact, I got a little bored and I started looking at my phone. I read a book, right? 
And then I decided, why not? I'll take a nap. Okay, maybe I didn't take a nap, but you get the point. It's a pretty easy process. So after the 13 minutes was over, I did take the eggs out of the water. I rinsed them in cold water to stop the cooking. Now let's take a look. And what I see here with method number two is that because we applied heat continuously through the 13 minute duration, right? The egg white is cooked more evenly. It has more structure. And the same thing with the egg yolk. It has this kind of soft custard-like texture. And that makes for a wonderful Japanese spring egg. Now we've talked a lot about eggs. And if you're interested in learning how to pasteurize eggs at home, with the sous vide machine. I'll include a link down in the description below. If you found this helpful, punch that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and I'll see you at the next video.